On November 30th, Elon Musk's Neuralink brain implant company shared a massive update with the public. This was the most thorough and detailed presentation yet on how their advanced brain-computer interface technology functions and what it is capable of. The innovations at Neuralink are centered around making brain-computer interface, or BCI, so accessible and scalable that these implants simply become a normal part of our society, like having a pacemaker or getting laser eye surgery. Thousands and eventually millions of people could be using Neuralink devices to treat various medical conditions or injuries, and you would never be able to tell that they have the implant. This is a technology that will aspirationally help the paralyzed to walk and the blind to see. And this isn't just one of Elon Musk's science fiction dreams anymore. Neuralink expects to begin their first round of human trials within the next six months. So, here is how Neuralink is taking brain implants mainstream. So, Elon Musk kind of led off his presentation by explaining the basics of what a Neuralink actually does, which is important because not everyone watching this right now is going to be well-versed in the field of BCI, so we do need to establish the fundamentals. Neuralink is an invasive-style BCI, which means that it interfaces directly with the brain matter through a physical connection, and that will allow their device to create a whole brain interface, reading and writing signals across the entire brain. This gives BCI the potential to solve any number of debilitating neurological issues, and it can also extend the reach of the implant to the greater nervous system, allowing them to reverse paralysis caused by spinal injuries. All of the activity that happens inside your brain and your nervous system is just a series of electrical impulses, and by decoding this language, we can read the messages being sent between neurons and even insert new ones. One of the most interesting things we saw was Neuralink's visualization of that neural activity in the brain. It displays like code from the matrix, but it is a visual representation of the millions of tiny electrical signals that make up our entire human experience. In order to get close enough to that neural network to get an accurate reading of the electrical signals, we need to place electrodes directly into the cerebral cortex. That's the outermost layer of the brain. It's only a few millimeters thick, but it holds the most dense collection of neurons and nerve cells in the central nervous system. That makes it a prime candidate for probing with Neuralink's tiny electrode wires, forming the interface between brain and machine. This will allow a person with an extreme physical disability, such as tetraplegia, the inability to operate any muscles of the body, to control a smartphone or computer, and with a Neuralink device, that person could actually have better control over a smartphone than a person using their hands. Elon Musk also said that he believes one of the first applications for Neuralink can be restoring sight to the blind. Even people who have never had vision before in their lives would be able to see the world by linking a digital camera directly into their visual cortex. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. The machine in this case is the N1 implant. Elon loves to describe this device as a Fitbit that sits inside your skull, and that's actually very accurate to what it is. Those electrode wires, about 1,000 of them, connect directly from the cortex to the N1, which is about the size of a quarter and the same thickness as the bone that surrounds the brain. The N1 is simply reading the neurological signal from the cortex and transmitting that signal wirelessly through Bluetooth to a nearby computer or smartphone for processing. Right now, the N1 is in a prototype stage, which is what Elon Musk considers to be the easy part. He's said many times in the past when referring to his work at Tesla and SpaceX that making a prototype is easy, but getting the final product to mass production is very hard. 99% of the work or more is in the process of going from prototype to finished product. In the case of the Neuralink implant, it needs to be medically safe, reliable, durable under a wide range of scenarios, affordable and scalable to the point where the company can manufacture millions of units. Elon also pointed out that the implant has to be upgradable. 
You wouldn't want an iPhone 1 stuck in your head when the iPhone 14 is out, and the technological progress on the implant devices will probably be very similar. So the process must be reversible and upgradable. That is fundamental to the design. And this is something that Neuralink has already been able to accomplish. If we remember from last year, Neuralink demonstrated Pager, the mind pong monkey, a macaque who was able to play the simple video game with his thoughts alone. The Neuralink device read the electrical signals from Pager's neurons associated with moving the pong paddle and sent that directly to the computer running the game software. Neuralink confirmed that Pager is still alive and well at their facility and said that his N1 implant had already been successfully upgraded to the latest version. The company said that since the earliest versions of their implant device, they've been able to improve the N1 with three times greater impact resistance, two times longer battery life, two times higher maximum charging rate, at three times longer charging distance, and with a three times greater Bluetooth wireless range improvement. The wireless charging technology is actually very important to the success of the N1 device because it sits underneath the skin. It is very difficult to perfectly line up the implant with the charging coil, so the inductive charging needs to be able to work from a distance. They also need to make the charging process safe for brain tissue. The device can't get hot when it charges, but it also needs to charge quickly so that the patient isn't just sitting there with a charging coil on their head for hours every day. Neuralink gave two specific examples of how the N1 implant can be used that were pretty mind-blowing. One was to restore vision to a blind person. So, assuming that the person's eyes have failed as an input device, either by injury or natural defect, the visual cortex region of the brain will still be there and still be functional. It just needs a new input. What Neuralink is going to do is take the visual signal from a digital camera, like a GoPro strapped to the person's forehead, stream that video wirelessly into a smartphone, which will then translate the video image into the neural network code and stream that data to the N1, which can deliver the input signal straight into the neurons of the visual cortex. Example number two is where things get really crazy, using multiple N1 implants to reanimate a paralyzed body. We saw the demonstrations of how Neuralink is allowing Sake the monkey to type on a virtual keyboard using a cursor that they control with their mind. This is the short-term solution to helping people who have no physical movement to use a computer. But the long-term solution is to actually help that person to regain control of their own body. So again, all of the activity that happens inside your brain and your nervous system is just electrical signals. The signals for movement originate in the brain and travel out to the body through the spinal cord. If the spinal cord is broken or damaged, then the connection is cut. But the ability of the brain to produce the signals and the ability of the muscles to receive them and move is still there. So we just need the signal to jump the broken connection. In order to do so, the Neuralink installs a second N1 device directly into the spinal column, positioned below the damage. That way, they can take the signal from the upper motor neuron in the motor cortex, record that into the N1, and send that signal through the Bluetooth to the second N1 that delivers it straight into the lower motor neuron of the spinal cord. Neuralink is already putting this theory into the testing phase. They demonstrated a pig that has two N1 devices, one in the brain and one in the spinal cord. This allows the Neuralink scientists to stream data from the motor cortex and the spinal cord simultaneously so they can decode the movement by learning how an activation in the brain translates to an activation in the leg. And that got even crazier when they showed how they could actually induce a specific movement in the pig's leg, like a contraction or extension just by stimulating a particular neuron through the N1 device. We also got our first look at the surgical process behind a Neuralink implant. The process is heavily reliant on Neuralink's R1 robot, which is responsible for placing the electrode wires into the cortex. It's basically like a sewing machine on your brain. That part is kind of gruesome, by the way. The first step of the procedure is going to be to cut a flap into the skin of the head that can be peeled back to reveal the bones of the skull. Next, a circular portion of the skull has to be cut and removed to make room for the N1. I don't know if you get to keep the circle, I would want to keep mine at least, 
But regardless, in the current version of the procedure, Neuralink also needs to remove a section of the outer brain called the dura. It's like a protective layer between the cortex and the skull, and it's very difficult to get the electrodes through that layer. However, future versions of the procedure will leave the dura intact, which will allow for the procedure to be much safer and also fully reversible. Now, this is where the R1 sewing machine robot comes in. It needs to stick that tiny thread right into the brain matter. It doesn't need to go very deep, it's only going in a millimeter or so, but this needs to be done very quickly and very accurately. The electrode needs to get as close to the target neuron as possible, but it also needs to avoid hitting any of the blood vessels that run through that cortex, and there are a lot of them. And it also needs to do this on a moving target. Don't forget that your brain is constantly pulsating with the rhythm of your heartbeat. So the R1 actually has a very advanced targeting system that allows it to place the thread precisely and safely. Currently, the R1 is using a combination of a camera video feed and an optical laser to position the needle. They demonstrated the insertion process on an artificial brain, and you can see that the insertion happens in the blink of an eye with a quick little punch of the needle. And that needle point itself is an engineering feat. It has to hook the thread and hold onto it as the thread is positioned above the brain, and then the hook needs to release the thread on insertion. Those electrode threads are so incredibly small that they are only the width of a few red blood cells across. They are significantly finer than human hairs. So far, Neuralink has constructed a double operating room at their Austin, Texas headquarters, and that's where the first human trial of both the N1 Link and R1 robot will occur. But the company's goals for the not-so-distant future is to build their own medical clinic where they can treat multiple patients. So, that's what Neuralink is up to right now. They've made a ton of progress over the past couple of years, and they've made a pretty strong case that their technology is ready to go to the next level. And that level is a real human trial. What do you think? Are you a Neuralink believer or still skeptical? At what point would you be willing to get one of these for yourself? Drop your thoughts down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.